Okay, what you're about to experience is schadenfreude, a German term for taking pleasure in someone else's misfortune. Let's back up a bit. There's a cottage industry around schadenfreude online. It's why fail videos get tens of millions of views, and it's why they're so much fun to watch. Fail compilations are an evolution of things like Jackass and the America's Funniest Home Video format, which is really just a non-fiction version of the slapstick comedy that you see in The Three Stooges or Charlie Chaplin movies or Shakespeare's comedies, going all the way back, probably, to the origin of laughter itself. Why do we feel this way? What makes us enjoy the pain of others? It comes down, I think, to identity and self-esteem. Human society is defined by competition and comparison. When you see someone fail, your psyche is rewarded with a little boost, the feeling that you're better off than they are. Schadenfreude is particularly strong when the failer in question is arrogant or deserving, or even just too successful. That's why we delight when celebrities fall from grace. It's why the downfall of super high achievers like Tiger Woods generates so much media attention. In societies, these feelings extend to our groups. The more we identify with our in-group, like our favorite sports team, for example, the more susceptible we are to schadenfreude when a rival team loses. Now, in the realm of sports and people falling off rope swings, feelings of schadenfreude are natural and innocent. Self-esteem is not a steady thing. It fluctuates. And if a fail compilation makes you laugh, why not? Where schadenfreude, I think, becomes poisonous is in the universe of politics. I mean, if schadenfreude is a feature of in-groups and out-groups in competition, it should be no surprise that it festers in our political parties, where the victory of one side almost always means a defeat of the other. And studies on schadenfreude in politics bear this out. Intensity of party affiliation strongly predicts whether events produce schadenfreude in their members. When the Republican Party missteps or one of its members commits a gaffe, Democrats report feelings of schadenfreude and vice versa. What complicates things is that politics involves the well-being and the suffering of millions of people. The failure of your opponent group can often spell objectively bad consequences for everybody. And yet the most disturbing finding of studies on schadenfreude and politics is that even in these cases, people report schadenfreude as long as their opponents lose out. Scary as that is, you can take solace in the fact that most people understand that these feelings are socially inappropriate, which is why they're felt but not really spoken about. Studies bear this out too. Those who report feelings of schadenfreude at objectively bad news, like an economic downturn hurting the opposing party, are also deeply ambivalent about just having that emotion. Or at least they used to be. All I did is point out the fact that on the cover of the National Enquirer, there was a picture of her, him and crazy Lee Harvey Oswald having breakfast. Now, Ted never denied that it was his father. One of the things that troubled me about the 2016 election was the presence of schadenfreude among Democrats and opponents of Donald Trump. He seemed to free people up somehow. And I think it's because ambivalence about schadenfreude in politics is a result of the fact that on some level we believe our opponent group is genuinely trying to help, but just going about it the wrong way. Trump, on the other hand, is so cartoonish, so nakedly self-serving, that any reservations people might have about basking in his blunders just evaporated. Donald Trump is the perfect figure for schadenfreude. He checks every box. Arrogant, successful, deserving. What's more, he openly participates in it himself. It's Rubio! Trump offered the opportunity for guilt-free schadenfreude. And this is what troubled me. Because it was natural for Trump's supporters to take pleasure in his candidacy, but what I saw all around me was his opponents feeling the same way. For many, it was just as enjoyable as watching a fail compilation video, seeing him make appalling comment after appalling comment. At the start, when he was a joke, there seemed to be a little harm in expressing this schadenfreude. But there was an effect. Because the news media registered this feeling as interest, and as a result, gave an enormously lopsided amount of media coverage to his campaign, which made Trump the focus of everything. It may be the first time in US history that collective schadenfreude influenced a political outcome. And that's not a joke at all. 
Right now, we're living through an intoxicating mixture of entertainment, politics, journalism, and schadenfreude. It's a mixture that is unbelievably great for the news media. And as Trump is embroiled in the Russia investigation, the news media is showing its best side, but its worst side, too. With each new revelation, each new bombshell report, the schadenfreude becomes stronger, and that incentive is impossible for media executives to resist. If Trump goes down, it'll be met with elation from certain sectors of the public. And who knows, he may deserve it. But whatever happens with his presidency, schadenfreude is a drug that we ought to keep in check. Because like any drug, a growing tolerance will eventually mean a growing desire for more of it more often. And that's not a force we want powering our politics. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. I've been thinking about this for a while now, so it was great to sort of get it off my chest. Uh, this episode was brought to you by Squarespace. If you want to make a website and you want it to be a really easy process, Squarespace has some beautiful award-winning designer templates to choose from that makes the process really simple. It's got 24-hour customer service, no upgrades, nothing to install, no patches ever, and picking your domain name is really easy. You can start your free trial at squarespace.com, and if you use the offer code NERDWRITER, you can get 10% off your free first purchase. If you want to make a website, use Squarespace. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time.